My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. I'll people make friends. I'm just trying to make a little money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate, teach, put in context. Call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Cramey. All right, all right, I have to, I, I, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of this endless parlor game where we guess whether or not we're in a recession or how deep the recession will be. It's become endemic, even on good days like today, where the Dow gained 184 points. Dow SB advanced 0.75%. NASDAQ jumped 1.13%. In fact, recession speculation is the one universal that binds everybody, from analysts to commentators to home gamers. We just can't seem to help ourselves. All I can say is that if you want to make something self-fulfilling, then keep talking about it morning, noon, and night. Even if it's not inevitable, the relentless recession chatter might make it inevitable. So I'm not playing that parlor game. No, I'm not just whistling past the graveyard either. I realize we got that inverted yield curve where the short rates are higher than long rates. I can read. I know that's a real bad sign for the economy, although I point out that the inverted yield curve has indeed called 12 of the last six recessions. I expect the Fed to talk tough next week. That's what they do. It's entirely possible this overheated economy could derail, crashing into a gigantic retaining wall at 90 miles an hour. But how about this? How about this? I'm starting to see things another way. See, it's also possible that the Fed hunkers down because they recognize that we're all so scared by the CEOs we hear the doom and gloom is palpable and it might be enough to put a big enough dent in spending and into our psychology to let the Fed beat inflation without destroying the whole economy. Pollyanna, listen to me. Basically, the Fed doesn't have to bring the pain if we inflict the pain on ourselves. And I think that's exactly what we're doing. I am not saying this. House of pleasure. I am saying that this could be wrong. And you know nothing. Where do I see it happening? Better to ask where I do not. Because it's everywhere. You just got to open your eyes and see it. Let's tackle them one by one. First, there's a widespread belief that food prices have soared and are never, ever going to come down, right? But, you know, we had Wingstop on the week, uh, earlier in the week, and the CEO emphasized that they're cleaning up. Why? Because chicken wing prices have plummeted. <laughs> it's not just chicken. And by the way, the rest of the chicken, it's not just the wings. The whole chicken goes with the wings, and it's plummeted. We've now seen a collapse, by the way. Here's one you haven't heard, but I, I, I know you haven't heard. Do you know that wheat prices collapse? Do you know it's at 14-month lows? Do you know it's 9% lower than the end of November? Do you know that there's actually a glut of wheat in Russia? Wasn't that supposed to be where the shortage was coming from? And they got the glut? You could say that, that oh, wait a second, that's just wheat, and that's just chicken. Oh, no! You're being way too glib. Wheat and chicken are huge. Plus, remember the thing called the substitution effect? You might have missed that class. I didn't. You don't need to pay up for beef if chicken's coming down in price. That will quickly lead to a glut in cattle. Wheat's an even bigger deal. Too much wheat leads to gluts in all the other grains, too. These are meaningful moves, people, that are being completely overlooked by the bears, the bears who are trying to scare us, the bears who have the microphones, the bears who would let us think that, you know what? Yeah, they believe the Fed has to run us over, throw the car in reverse, and then run us over again. Hey, speaking of running people over, you seen the autos? All right, so used ones. But listen to me. Not that long ago, the electric vehicle companies raised massive amounts of money. Get this. Now, some of those, the EV guys, are starting to turn into real cars, real functioning companies with assembly lines that are producing things. Well, most of them had horrendous problems going to market. Do you know that they're finally coming out? We're going to have more, we're going to have Fiskers and Lucids and Rivians galore at this point next year. So you better believe the price of EV is coming down, maybe way down. Then there's oil and gas. 
No one's still going to this. All they talk about, oh, my God, I spent this much at the pump. Will you wake up, please? Have you seen this? They totally collapsed. When oil broke out above 100 earlier this year, we heard endlessly that it was headed straight to $150 a barrel. If you remember this, you might want to get your head checked. It's kind of like getting your oil checked. They still do that, right? They got, the, they got rid of carburetors, you know. Anyway, now oil's come down to 71. And if the oil stocks are telling the truth, which they certainly are, we're soon going to see gasoline at $3 per gallon. Of course, while, when, while soaring prices at the pump make for a sexy story, falling prices at the pump is incredibly boring. Dog bites man, kind of, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I find it hard to get too worked up about inflation with the price of gasoline plummeting. That silly spike this morning off a nasty pipeline spill didn't last past midday. That's how much oil there is. Oh, my God. Look, it's everywhere, but not a drop to drink. Thank heavens. I think it looks 60-ish to me. Heating oil was supposed to be off the charts expensive, making it hard for people to make ends meet. Now, though, the stocks are trading like natural gas is on a collision course where, where it was as low as last year. Maybe the bears just choose not to notice, okay? But maybe the Fed will. More importantly, in the last month, so many of the CEOs I talked to have told me that it's no longer difficult to find workers in a complete panoply of industries. Many people are coming back to the office because their benefits are exhausted. Others just need to pay off expensive rent or debts they accumulated over the past few years. Jobs are finally being filled across the whole skin of the economy, even as we're constantly being told that wages kept being bid up. What a narrative that I'm sick of. If the labor shortage goes away, so will the most difficult part of inflation, wage inflation. All right, how about these used cars? They've been the bane of the consumer price index because their prices just just kept going higher and higher. But do you know now they peaked months ago? Do you know now the price of an average used car is actually in free fall? Well below where it was 12 months ago, and those year-over-year declines are just getting larger. Plus, it looks like this Carvana might be in danger of going under. If that's true, we could be looking at a used car glut in a matter of days, as they are a vast repository of once new cars over there at the Carvana. All right, how about housing? All right, 10% of the economy, and it's already become problematic for buying for most home buyers who can't afford to keep up with radical insurance and increase in mortgage rates. But unless you're in the business of real estate, you might not recognize that the current slowdown in the pace of, of sales will lead to a cascade of price cutting. <laughs> That's how every real estate down cycle has played out in the past. Housing peaks are a little weird because the process of buying and selling real estate is a big production. In every downturn I've seen, first you get that freeze where transactions stop happening. That's right now. Then after months of this, the sellers finally break their discipline and they start cutting prices, leading to a collapse practically overnight. Do you know what I think we're on the we're on the cusp of that right now. There are other gluts all over the place. I mean, you can see them from ads, the decline in PC prices, their components, or I don't know. I mean, you're luck, probably not a member of Ollie's Army, and I get that. There's only about 30 million of us, but we're strong. And we just got our flyers today. And I'm starting to see discounts, not just in appliances, which are coming down big time, but get this, toys galore. And even, despite the upgrade in Hershey's today, candy, bottom line. You can say these are all one-off. Go ahead. Go dismiss me as anecdotal, not empirical. But to me, the writing's already on the wall. It doesn't have to be a recession. The economy just needs to stabilize at a lower level, which I think is already starting to happen. This is the winning hand that nobody playing the recession parlor game seems willing to acknowledge, even as I bet it's become the most likely outcome. Mark, you're watching your mark. Hey, Jim. Greetings from Spokane, Washington. Love Spokane. Been there many <laughs> times. It's Dino Might. What's up? Yeah, all right. Next time you're in town, give me a call up dinner. I'll <laughs> give you a jingle. What's happening? <laughs> uh, Jim, despite supply chain disruptions and inflationary uh, pressures, Snap-on still reported decent Q3 earnings pretty much across the board. And given its premium pricing, I'd be interested in hearing your current thoughts on SNA as we head into 2023. All right, here's it. I got this. I got it. I got it. I got it. It sells at 14 times earnings. There was a group of short sellers who ganged up on this thing endlessly, and they kept it down. And they've been busted. And that's why the stock's going hard. Listen to me. It doesn't have to end in a recession. The economy just needs to stabilize at a lower level, which I think is already starting to happen. On Mad Money Tonight, an interview you don't want to miss. 
some tough questions for Salesforce CEO Mark Benioff. Have there been major defections of customers, major defections of shareholders because of the publicity involved with, with, with Brett's departure and with the departure of others' executives? Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.